Rahmati Allah Ati Rasulullah Ramri Minkum and always a reminder for myself and abdukil ajeezu da'eefu miskinu zalimu jahan and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah earlier it wasn't the nicest word to use as stupid so that wasn't polite because 90% of people their lives are like that. So the more appropriate word is that's not the best way to live your life and to write your book. That it's a deep subject and the secret of a successful life. That when we write the last chapter to die in the way of Allah that is deep but very attainable. And it doesn't mean I have to grow beard and wear a hat and, and do all the things the shaykh is doing. It means I can be a doctor, I can be a lawyer, I can be an engineer, I can be a plumber, I can be anything. But that target has to be in my life because this life goes so fast and the winds of deceit blow in every direction that without that last chapter written clearly and we post it on our walls and post it everywhere that we can see that my last chapter of life has to take me to die in the way of my Lord. Without that then any job and it answers every question that people say, what job I should take, what school I should go, what, what choices I should make, who should I be with, who should I not be with. All these questions are answered if you write your last chapter and you ask and look at the chapter and every time you want to get a job. Is this going to take me to this chapter or is the likelihood going to distract me in a different direction? Some careers you take they're never going to go into that chapter because the virtue of that career is something else. And that's what that shaitan comes to our life to say, don't write that chapter, let's just see what unfolds. But that's not the way of wisdom and the wisdom of the heavens is a continuous reminder that write your last chapter, post it everywhere and make a life in which you can move in that direction. And it's a light in this life of ours that's like a dark tunnel. But when I keep looking at that chapter and every question I have is, how am I going to get there Ya Rabbi? And every prayer that comes it's with that intention. Ya Rabbi open for me Ya Rabbi, open for me that which I don't know but you know best. That whatever you're going to open for me, whatever you're going to grant to me, whatever you're going to destine for me, Ya Rabbi grant it to be from that last chapter of mitna fi tariqatihim. That I want to die in your way, I want to die in your service and most important I want to die in the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and lift that from my heart. Khudanakunan, that's why we have these nasheed and urdu, don't God forbid that that lift to my heart and, and I only mention Allah without the mentioning of Sayyidina Muhammad I became something else, it's a different way. That's what we hope and we pray and that that message reaches to myself as a constant reminder. And most important after you witness death and participate in death and participate in, in people departing this world. And all the plans they had and all the thoughts they told you and in the end it was something different. And this world distracted and deceived people. And if you don't have that chapter written as you get older and older, you know in this world if you're not surrounded by people who have the same ending chapter, you know what they're going to do to you when they find you? They're going to find a th the cheapest way to bury you. And they're going to sit with the mortician and say, what's the cheapest we can do? Well, we can burn him for five hundred bucks. So, do you have anything cheaper? I say, yeah, we put him in acid for eighty-five bucks. And they're liquefying people now because they don't want to pay the price of the land, they don't want to pay the price of a box or a kafan. If we want that then we should have planned in that direction. Don't leave it to other people, buy your plot, buy everything and say, I'm not leaving it for people, they won't pay for my, my burial. I'm going to go buy it ahead of time 
and you buy what you want. It means you live your life fulfilling that last chapter. And as you're getting older you think that, am I going to be around the people who have that same understanding? So that we have that understanding, that community, that same goal that we're trying to achieve and it become more and more difficult as you grow older and that becomes more and more apparent because the friends they keep they don't probably think about that last chapter and they start to go in all different directions. But you have to think that in that last chapter who's going to wash me when I go? Who's going to make sure that my, my burial is proper? Who's going to take care of all those things? If you leave it to shaitan he'll surround you with people that just dump the body. So our life is about planning, our life is about a discipline, our life about everything for us to be coordinated. We try our best and leave to Allah what, what is in the hands of Allah Subhanahu rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon, as salaamun al mursaleen, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, muhammadi muhammad mustafa. Sayyidi Surat al Fatiha. Amin. Do you have any questions for tonight? InshaAllah. Uh, people also were asking yesterday too if we can renew their bayah. Fawza billahi min shaitanir rajeem. InshaAllah bin niyata the bayat into Naqshbandiyat al Aliyah under Sultan al Awliya and Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani, Sultan Awliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani. And the uh, 41st Shaykh of Naqshbandiya Tariqah, Ma'an Shaykh Muhammad Adil, and the barakah and the blessings of Mawlana Shaykh Hisham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani. Fa'auzu billahi min ash-shaitanir rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Inna ladina yubayyunaka inna ma yubayyunallah. Wa yad Allahi fawka aydihim, fa man naqadu fa inna ma yaghuta ala nafsi, wa man awfa bima ahad, alayhullah fa sayyutun ajran adheeman. رضينا بالله ربا وبإسلام دينا وبسيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم رسول والنبي وبقرآن كتابا والله ما نقول وكيل وحمد لله رب العالمين وقبلنا بسيدنا سلطان الأولياء مولانا الشيخ محمد نازم حقاني شيخنا ومشيدنا ومولانا الشيخ محمد عادل شيخنا ومشيدنا في بركة أولياء الله مولانا الشيخ الشام كباني الشيخ عدنان كباني اللهم انا قول وكيل والله 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 حق الله والله والله حق الله والله والله حق حق يا ربي الا شرف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اصحابه الكرام ولا مشايخنا في طريقه النشبنديه العليه خاصه روح امام طريقه غوت خليك Shah Naqshban, Muhammad Awais al-Bukhari, Sultan Awliya Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghestani, Sultan Awliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Mawlana Shaykh Hisham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Ma'abd Khaliq al-Khujdawani, Sahib Zaman Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi alayhi salam, Wa Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Wa Sayyifullah Sayyidina alayhi salam, Thumma Sabaqa Siddiq Sayyidina Ummar Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam, Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, wa Sayyidatina Fatima al-Tiza alayhi salam, wa Sayyidah wa Sadatina wa Siddiqina al-Fatiha. Rika shafati ya Rasul al-Kareem. Ameen. Ya Rabbi. InshaAllah. As salamu alaykum Sayyidi. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what exactly happens to a person after they pass away? Do they visit? Uh, family, relatives and what is the 40 days? InshaAllah when somebody dies there is a 40 day seclusion and that's all the teachings that the tariqah is teaching that everybody has to do the 40 days in which Allah will dress the servant and complete upon the servant. And these are for servants of belief, servants of disbelief then the grave becomes a, a great difficulty. 
unless Allah has destined for them an intercession in which there's going to be somebody interceding for that grave. And that goes into many different things. But for the believer, the one whom believes, everybody has to do the 40 days. And that's why Nawat al Arba'een, Nawat al Itikaf, Nawat al Khal wa Suluq wa Siyam fi Had al Majlis Ya Rabbil Arshul Azeem is that we have to do that 40 days in the grave. Anyone who makes intention to do the 40 days, Mawlana Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani is teaching that if you make that intention during all of your amal, the time in which you started that amal will count towards those 40 days. Mm. So imagine 30 years of making that intention before every zikr, every prayer, every… anything you do of worshipness, make that intention immediately that clock is running for your 40 days. So tonight we did three hours towards the 40 days just by making with al arba'een, with al itiqaf, with al khal, with al siyam, with al majlis, there's more correct words, email help me at nurmuhammad.com and then we send everything that you need. That's one important thing. You do the khalwa in on dunya, so the importance of, of meditating, contemplating is to achieve that reality upon the earth and if not then into the qabr and the 40 days is a seclusion. And the first level of seclusion is to take away all the bad characteristics. So when the shaykhs are ordered into seclusion, the first 40 day seclusion is all their bad characteristics, bad energies, angers, all the characteristics in which Allah is not pleased with, they have to be cleaned in that first khalwa. But that's why the Khalwa is based on your ability to make your muraqabah and your contemplation. Without that then there's no khalwa because khalwa is about going into your inner reality and fighting your inner demons. So the concept of connecting with the shaykh, the concept of connecting your heart, the concept of meditating, all that has to be mastered before the entry into a khalwa. And people who have entered into khalwa without that, they come in monkey in and monkey out. Means there's no change. They went in there without any of those prerequisites and they came out the same. There was no inner work. It's not about just go there, just do Allah, 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 Allah something going to change. You have to be able to make your connection because Allah cuts you off from the world so that you can magnify that connection and enter into what Allah wants the servant to enter into. So then that first 40 days is all the bad characteristics and we have talks on that. You can google on nurmuhammad.com the khalwa. And then there's talks and articles on khalwa 1 and khalwa 2 that the manifestation that occurs within the khalwa is important. That your bad characteristics manifest as creatures. So as soon as you sit into the seclusion immediately dogs start to attack you from the unseen realm because the energy of our character Allah will give a permission for the jinn to manifest that energy as creatures. So then you see your qadab and your anger are like very wild dogs like a Rottweiler and these dogs come and begin to attack you. And in that isolation the attack is very real because the jinn have the ability to touch your senses and activate your mind to see them. And once you see them and get the sense of touch with on your skin you feel it. So you'll see the dog. And then you feel the dog grabbing and biting your skin. So then that can be a very horrific experience. But with the tafakkur and contemplation the shaykhs will inspire within your heart that keep istiqam, keep your firmness and keep making your zikr and breathe through it. And then Allah want you to witness all your badness and character. You go from the dogs to cockroaches to rats. The rats were nice because they fill the room and they begin to come all over you and you feel them biting in every orifice of your body from top to bottom there's no, nowhere sacred that they don't enter and bite you. 
and you get to enjoy that feeling and Allah showing, see this, this character of being a rat, this is… you're going to take that into the grave and there's no way for you to come to My paradise with these. So you have to sit through that and make your zikr, make your istighfar and begin to clean these characteristics and then goes into deeper, deeper details inshaAllah. But the concept of the shaykhs is that they've been put into seclusion. Now there are shaykhs who have not been put into seclusion, they're of a different reality completely because they're speaking from something they don't know and they did not witness. So the, the shaykhs of guidance, not the shaykh of barakah, just talking for the barakah of people, but the shaykh of guidance and hidayat, he has to have witnessed these realities, work through that difficulty. Now he's been sent back to guide people through that difficulty. And we gave an example before, if you don't know a terrain but you only saw its brochure, you say, oh yeah it's like this, it's like this because the brochure says it's like that. But inside there may be hidden difficulties that only one who was there and in it understood it. So inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. See, what is the reality behind the last seven breaths before we pass away? The reality of the last seven breaths, I have no idea. <laughs> I haven't taken my last seven breaths. But Mawlana Shaykh's teaching is that what happens in those breaths is not something that can be understood. That in every breath of ours can be an infinite capacity of time. So as the soul is leaving, they say within that last seven breaths, each breath can have its own entire existence for the servant. Because we said just in meditation and understanding a timeless reality, timeless reality, once you get that and study <laughs> that, <laughs> for what? Timeless. We are living a very timed life. So when you begin to make your tafakkur and contemplation you realize that every time you meditate and you begin to operate from your soul that has no more time. So how long were you in their presence? What happened in every breath while you were breathing in that presence? What was being conveyed to you and what was being taken out of you? That's in a timeless reality. It's not the same reality as, as the timed. The timed reality has cause and effect. Timeless has no cause and effect. Allah does whatever Allah wants, convey what Allah, Allah wants to convey. So imagine then the departing of the soul on its final departure. What Allah can take that soul to live an entire existence in perfect worshipness and then be purified and clean before arriving into their heavenly destination. But Allah's great, when we say, Allahu Akbar, it's Akbar is beyond comprehension. And as soon as we take a path of love and muhabbat and ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad we are not a people that teach of narani and continuous punishment, Allah going to do this to you, that to you, because these are the people of ashiqeen and muhabbat. And they focus on this ishq and this muhabbat that when you love whom Allah loves then it's only about the immense bounty that Allah wants to bestow upon the soul and its blessings and its immense blessings inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How can we fight our nafs voice if he advises us to do bad? How do you fight your nafs voice if he advises you to do bad that's right. Eat some potato chips. No. Yeah, that's the, the whole concept of the wudu, the taweez and then making your connection. Because the more you have the connection, the harder that waswas is coming, is harder for that waswas to approach. That's the whole concept, that's why you have to get this timeless reality. Because again that, that is a sign from the meditation. We said before the fly is, is coming to attack you and he come land on your head. Okay the fly already came, that shaitan already came. But when you bring your light and meditate it's no longer your light. Every time you connect your heart 
the fires of the shaykhs are coming like satellite dishes reflecting from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So why Allah says that shaitan can attack everybody but my mukhlas? So I'm going to attack all your servants, Allah said, you attack who you want except my mukhlas. Why? Because the light that the mukhlas are carrying and that's how they're trying to reach to that understanding and that level is that by connecting the fayas is dressing them, this satellite is blessing them, blessing them, blessing them until their light becomes of a frequency that is too agitating for these devils and these uh, marada to come close. They're getting burned to come close to you and that's what we talked about in the Dracula movies. That if your light is and your soul is like sunshine, these devils to go out into the sunlight they're going to be burned and annihilated before they can reach you because you are the sunshine. You are the sunshine of my life, right? Because you're glowing. When you're glowing the shaitans are, are being burnt by you, especially by your eyes from the light and that's why Prophet described, watch out for the vision of the believer for he looks with the light of Allah because their firasat is from Allah's light. As a result those devils are running. But when we don't have that light and we operate like a shade and darkness they're all over the place coming as much as they want to whisper, to attack. So that's the whole concept that is how do we take ourselves from the darkness and into the light. And you surround yourself by the sunshine so that you one day will be a sunshine. So the more you make your madad, these are Allah's sons, these are Allah's stars. All my companions are like stars on a dark night. Imagine keeping the companionship of the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad and his Ahlul Bayt. Means then these are like sunshine all around the servant making them and making that person into a sun because that light is reflecting and depositing, depositing until they begin to glow. And as a result of their glowing then these shayateen are moving farther and farther away, becomes harder for them to whisper. And that's what we talked last night is that you're moving towards that fire that has to be a fire of love, let things that burn, burn. But keep your, your firmness and keep your practices, keep control of your temper and your characteristics so that you're washing, purifying and understanding when shaitan's coming that you're becoming fiery and you're not reflecting it, you're actually accepting it and you never accept the, the devil's energy. You're trying to reflect it, go wash, go pray, take a break from that anger so that too Bring that down with salawats and muraqabah and contemplation and asking for a strong, when they're making a strong tafakkur they're asking from that light of Prophet ﷺ to intercede for them. All these tools to stop these characteristics, inshaAllah. So it's a whole system not just take one piece and say, how do I do that, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam with the reference to yesterday's lecture, mm. does istighfar burn as well or difficulties are required to burn away the dunya, impurities in us? Istighfar burns away our sins and sayyat, right? So when we're making istighfar we're burning all of these difficulties and these bad characters within us. At the same time because Allah is accepting that istighfar and becomes all the difficulties around our life because as soon as Allah's fire, because this is all by analogy for us just to understand, Allah's ishq and love is a fire, right? So Nabi Musa salam with this love for Allah out on the desert he's a salik and seeking, his soul fire and a flame, why? Because that was the condition of his heart salam. Allah said, I'll show you on the horizon and then I'll show you within yourself. So what he saw was a reflection of that love that's within his heart yearning for that Divinely Presence. But when Allah cast that love within the heart of the servant they're becoming lit, 
even if it's a small drop of that light. As a result of that fire of Divinely Presence it burns all other than what Allah wants. If Allah wants the good character that stays, everything other than that, that fire it begins to burn away everything. And the istighfar is to purify ourselves at every moment we're doing something wrong. So we're continuously making istighfar and that's like the washing and the cleansing. And then we beautify ourselves with salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad It's the beatific fragrance for the believer. As soon as they, they make their lips and their hearts in the praising of Sayyidina Muhammad a beatific light and dress begins to fragrant their soul and their entire wujud and being inshaAllah. But first you have to wash before you become fragrant because you're just putting cologne on, on, on dirty body is of no value, wash and clean and then you fragrant yourself with this ishq and love inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, I have one Naqshbandi taweez and it has been torn apart, teared into pieces. Ooh. What should we do with it? What have you been doing? How's it torn into pieces? InshaAllah, <laughs> get another one, yeah? Make one, download one, inshaAllah make du'a on it depending upon whatever your means then alhamdulillah get another Naqshbandi taweez, put it into a piece of leather, sew it up and wear it. Or if you want you can get the taweezes from the, the store. Because we get those from Lafqay inshaAllah, however you can, whatever is available and whatever means people have, get the taweez and wear it inshaAllah. And also saying, what's the adab with, with the current one, what do we do with it? Wear it. Just wear it? Yeah, yeah. If you have to, if you mean you have to do to retire it, put it somewhere in the room like a mm. taweez for the room, just hang it up on, a, on somewhere in the room for barakah and blessings, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah uh, Any advice on how to get through these hard times we are going through now and how to protect our children? Yeah, follow tariqah Like the same question we're always getting, yeah? It's yeah. everything that we're teaching is, is, is encapsulated in that. How to go through hard times, do your zikr, do your practices, do all the salawats, do all of these connections, do the muraqabah. Without the muraqabah you have really no sense of what's happening upon this earth and it just looks like something very, very scary. As soon as you make the connection you're asking to get into the Naqshbandi radio station, right? There's a frequency broadcasting for the heavens. So you have to have the Naqshbandi coordinates for their satellite systems. Through that connection you start connecting, you're connecting, what happens? Your ears, your inner ear begins to open and your inner eye will begin to open. That inner ear will start to tune into their frequency, your conscious understanding will increase. That's one for heavenly knowledge is no problem but also for daily coordinates. When we're making our connection we understand what kind of fitna people are doing, what is the devil playing behind the cards and you know, he's playing a magic game. People see like three cards but behind there's a parde black and his hands are moving everything. But as soon as you meditate what happens? Allah give you a vision of firasa because you look through the eyes and the light of Allah You look and you can say, hey I can see his hand, what is he doing? But everybody else can't see it, they just see something moving in the dark. But if Allah give you firas so you can see this guy's hands, he's doing all these funny things with everything. And that gives a clarity in life of the deception of what's happening upon this earth. That's when in the haqqaiq of dunya. So they, they understand, the shaykhs understand the truth of this earth. They did not go to the moon, there's bunnies they don't lay eggs, don't start slaughtering trees thinking you're worshipping Allah. So it means all of these truth and you're being enslaved by interest. This is a slavery, they took off one chain and they threw a different chain on your feet. So these are all of this system of dunya that is enslaving people, terrorizing and torturing people. And what Allah won't is then open your eyes to the haqqaiq of dunya. But that can only open with this firasa, with these lights, with all of these tajallis. 
So the servant's first level will begin to understand the wisdom of what's happening upon this earth. Then later on the wisdoms of the heavens and, and knowledges, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Ya Shaykh Walaykum as salaam. In Facebook's metaverse presentation they also stated you will be able to think things into existence which correlates with Tesla's neural link chip. How far do we submit to technological adoption? You have to watch our video manifestation <laughs> if it ever comes out from Haji Shammah Lloyd will release it anyway. <laughs> yeah. There's, we have many talks on the, on the manifestation, the reali reality of manifestation. So alhamdulillah these are all happening. These technologies inshaAllah we use them in the way of Allah to counter what shaitan is doing. And anything that shaitan is doing then it's, it's again to enslave and, and capture insan. So as long as you learn the haqqaiq, understand the haqqaiq and it's not writing you but you are writing it. If you don't understand the haqqaiq and you put those glasses on and all day long you're just sitting and playing video games, yes most definitely you're lost. But if we tell you, you know put those glasses on and join us in the zikr and, shaykh, and you're seeing Shaykh Abdul Faiz Daghestani in the zikr, we're fortunate for you because it's becoming more and more real and then you begin to believe it, you see it, you feel it, then they'll open your heart to experience it. So it's going to help our systems, take them to the next level of understanding and belief because Allah is supporting. But if you put it on to play video games and to, to grow as a potato into the couch, no, it's going to be very difficult. That's what they're hoping that you never leave again your couch, you pacify and you be fed the world the way they want you to see it. But no, no, we want to take this and now use it in Allah's way and feed them what the real world is, inshaAllah. Mm, as salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam there are times when someone you are with drain you complete energy and don't even let us concentrate. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just doze off in their presence. Can you please shed some light on that? Yes, yeah, some people and we're all energy beings. So everybody has an energy. If we always regulate ourselves and think that, am I going up or down? Am I going to an association that's higher than me? Then I'm going to give my burdens to them and take light. And if I'm going to an association lower than me, they're going to take my light and I'm going to take their burdens, right? It's very simple. Is that called electronics or energy? It's not electronics, it's not circuitry, it's just understanding of energy in school. Magnetism. Positive, negative forces. Magnetism. So I'm a positive force, I'm doing zikr. I don't have to think I'm huge force, I'm just a positive force, I do zikr, I'm trying to do good. Uh, let's go hang out with a bunch of bad people or not so positive people. They have, I think maybe they have a little bit more negative charge than me. I sit with them, what they're going to do? Their negative is just going to pull all my positive. And then I'm going to take their negative charge, they're going to go feeling very happy when they went home. <laughs> Woo, that was great, I feel so light. And the other one who's going to feel sick, nauseous because they took on the negative charges of people. So that's why then the nazar bar qadam was the whole tariqah was built is, watch where your feet are going. You know it's not the shaykh making rules for people like their father but be careful if you take this energy and you go lower they're going to pull your energy in a second, you're going to be drained and feel sick. Because there's a lot to pull from people who do zikr. Then you say, no I'm going to watch my qadam, I'm going to watch where I go and I try my best in life to go to the more positive associations. But when I go there then I feel extremely light because whatever was burdening me is being taken by the shaykhs in the association because his madad is through an unbroken chain that whoever looks at them their shaykhs are pulling that energy away from them. So then there are receptacles of that difficulty to pull that from people and take it up to their chain. They take it all the way up and the angels disperse of that energy. So then it's where am I going up or I'm going down. 
So there are friends and people we know that we know their energy is going to be negative, then they throw that positive, they throw their negative onto you. If it's relatives and family then you just have to do it because you don't hide from people like you're scared. Just you tolerate and go where you gotta go to keep your relations and, and, and Allah wants you to carry. You carry to the level that you can and to the extent that you can inshaAllah. And people who are not getting their questions answered, don't, don't be upset. Just email help me at nurmuhammad.com. This is not about, oh he didn't answer my question, he didn't ask my question and they get upset about it. This is about which questions are relative to the audience that stay within our theme. Because if the answers and questions are going in all different directions then the audience becomes confused. So you can keep asking it if, if they're not answering or not posing that question then just email help me at nurmuhammad.com inshaAllah and we'll send you the article on how to <laughs> meditate because <laughs> somebody emailed to that very angry, how come you always send the same link on how to meditate? I say, you didn't watch the video they just released, the, the secret of the soul and in that video it talked about that when you ask a question it's more the, the concern of, I just want to recognize and be recognized that I'm asking a question. But the talk should have answered all your, your questions. That's the mujazah or the, the miracle of tariqahs. They don't need you to ask a question to have answered it in your heart. That the minute you sit in the association, the same one who put that question into your heart, Rabbiul Ala, is the same one who said, go sit there. And you sit there and the same one whom is, is coming, we are just merely the, the flute, right? They say, I'm just the nay, but who plays through me is important, not me. So the same one who gave you the question, same one who put you down to sit is the same one whom is addressing the association. And this all about us all, taslim. Come and submit, I submit, we submit so that to empty ourselves of ourselves. And as soon as you submit then the one whom playing the flute, the one whom is coming out, that's the one whom is addressing everyone whom already gave their concerns, gave their questions and inspired them to sit and listen for your answer. So the tariqah is already answering. This concept of emailing and, and trying to ask it, this is an entertainment part. But most of you should have got your answer. So some people are persistent, it's not, you're not asking, you're not answering, you're not asking. No, I think the talk probably answered all your questions. But if you're too busy to wait to see when your question is going to pop up from the, the, the questions, you probably miss the answer that came in the talk because we're all on the same frequency. Everybody here is on the same frequency all over the world. It's all under Allah's domain and, and kingdom, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon. Wa salaamu ala mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa. Ma bi siri Suratin Fatiha.